wishes to address the concerns that might have on their mind or heart. Please. My name is Dennis Smith. I'm from Sparta. Last Wednesday, September 11th, 2013, was the 12th year since the Twin Towers of the World Trade Center were destroyed. As a result of that event, the government has been at war for 12 years, spending trillions of dollars, killed untold numbers of men women and children. We have lost thousands of our military through death and disability. Seen the production of heroin in Afghanistan go from almost zero under the Taliban to about 90% of the world's supply today. In America, the police state continues to grow larger. While individual liberty, personal freedom, and privacy are on the decline, we are told that potential terrorists are everywhere, and we should be afraid. The cabal that controls our government has used the official narrative of what happened on September 11th to completely change America. That narrative is being questioned by a growing number of people. There are multiple unanswered questions and inconsistencies related to the government's official story. But this morning, I'd like to concentrate on just one. We are told that two hijacked commercial aircraft descended from 35,000 feet, traveling at a high rate of speed, piloted by inexperienced hijackers, penetrated the towers, causing their collapse. Pilots for 9-11 Truth have done the first in-depth study concerning the flight of the two planes that struck the towers. They analyzed data provided by the National Transportation Safety Board in terms of a radar data impact speed study, in which the NTSB concluded that the plane that hit the South Tower was traveling at 510 knots, and the plane that hit the North Tower was traveling at 430 knots. The company that built the planes sets maximum operating speeds at 360 knots. This is important because a benchmark has been set of the crash of Egypt Air 990, a 767, which exceeded its maximum operating limits, causing in-flight structural failure. Egypt Air 990 was traveling 65 knots faster than its maximum operating speed, and 85 knots less than the alleged 767 that hit the South Tower, and five knots less than the plane that hit the North Tower. Pilots for 9-11 Truth have further studied if a 767 could continue controlled flight at such reported speeds. According to the NTSB, Egypt Air 990 wreckage was found in two distinct debris fields indicating in-flight structural failure, which has been determined to have occurred a few seconds after recording peak speed. Based on Egypt Air 990, it is impossible for the alleged United 175 to have continued controlled flight of more than 85 knots over the speed which failed the structure of Egypt Air 990. In other words, according to this study, it would have been impossible for ordinary commercial aircraft of this type to have remained intact at those speeds. The information from this study has led a former NASA flight director to state the obvious. These were not standard commercial planes. The implication here and the consequences to the county and the country should be clear. Concerning America's strengths and challenges, President Hoover once wrote the following. Our strength lies in spiritual concepts. It lies in public sensitivities to evil. Our greatest danger is not from invading armies. Our greatest danger, our dangers, are that we may commit suicide from within by complacency with evil. 
or by public tolerance of scandalous behavior. General Thomas Holcomb is the Commandant of the United States Marine Corps. He offered the following as his favorite prayer in Soldiers and Sailors' Prayer Book. O Almighty God, the Supreme Governor of all things, whose power no creature is able to resist, to whom it belongeth justly to punish sinners, and to be merciful to those who truly repent. Save and deliver us, we humbly beseech thee, from the hands of our enemies, that we, being armed with thy defense, may be preserved evermore from all perils to glorify thee, who art the only giver of all victory, through the merits of thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you, sir.